To Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best-selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello, and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. I am your host, Ralph Brogdon. We are here today to talk with the world's most successful business owners and leaders to get their tips and strategies for helping you build the business you need for the life you want. I am speaking today with Emmy Kirshner. She is a coach, a speaker, and an author, and she is the creator of the Empire Builder Assessment. It's a system she developed to break down how to build a business around the life you want with a step-by-step action plan that creates big results. And so that sounds exactly like what we talk about here on Rebelpreneur Radio. So, uh, Emmy, it's really exciting to have you on the program. Welcome. Thank you. I am really excited to be here. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah. So, um, you you were joining me by telephone, and you were in Philadelphia, I believe. Is that right? I am. I'm a little bit outside of Philly. Perfect. All right. Well, um, tell me a little bit about uh, who you are. What do you do, and who do you help? Absolutely. So I work with entrepreneurs who typically are service-based and they their overarching theme is that the people I work with want to have an impact in somebody else's life. You know, they want the world to be a better place. They want people to feel better, um, have a better experience, um, you know, to bring some sort of, of joy and, uh, and uplifting to them. And I help my clients build you know, bigger, better businesses and have more fun. Hmm. Well, that sounds like a, yeah. a very powerful thing to do. So you mean it's not all about making the money? It isn't, um, although I help them do that too. Typically, my clients double or triple their revenue hmm. while they're working with me. Um, but it's that comes from being more clear about what it is that they want, and then they're, they're really enjoying all aspects of their life. Because I think as entrepreneurs, we can dive into our business and – be you know completely um, involved in just that and let everything else go, and then time goes by and you're like, oh hey, you know, there's all these other things I'd like to have done as well. Mm. That tends to be a problem with entrepreneurs in particular. I think they get they get really focused on building their business, and then they forget that the purpose of building the business is to be able to live the life that you want, and they build a business and they don't have a life. Right, or they can't leave the business to have a life either. Mm. Um, you know, so like taking time off to you know have some downtime or go on vacation or spend it with friends and family becomes more difficult because if they step out at all, their business stops. Mm. Yeah, and that, I think that's a huge problem. Um, it, it, that's not something that they really teach you. <laughs> they, they people try to, <laughs> you know, they, they teach you how to build the big business, but not how to live the life. And my pet peeve has always been you, you build a business that you can't get away from. And basically you don't own a business, you own a job and worse, it owns you. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Exactly. And that's not what I want for any entrepreneur. Um, because there's more than just having your business, which I know is, you know, our baby most of the time. Um, and at least with my clients, what shows up a lot of times is, you know, guilt. I'm not spending enough time. I'm working on my business or I'm growing the business. And I'm not spending enough time with friends and family or I'm spending t- time with friends and family and I should be doing the you know long list of things that need to get done in a business. Yeah. It's like you're, you are always supposed to be somewhere you're not. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And, and I mean, if you're having those thoughts go through your head, then you're not really being present with whichever place that you're supposed to be in. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's it. That is 100% true. I can attest to that uh, myself. That's been my experience as well. Um, How long have you been doing this and, and what got you started in it? Yeah, I've had my own business 
for, according to LinkedIn, um, six years. And um, I actually started as a health coach. And I shifted a couple of years ago into more business lifestyle coaching because I've I've always worked with um, entrepreneurs uh, and along the lines of, well, you know, why are you stressed out? What are you, why are you not eating? Why are you overeating? We started talking about their business and, you know, the problems and challenges that they were having. And I started to solve those problems um, at the same time that I was helping them get healthier. And it, it was really just a natural evolution. Um, for me, I think, I mean, backing up a little bit more, my desire to have my own business started in my, <clears throat> excuse me, in my, my teens where I had, I don't know, any number of different ideas for businesses that I never really pursued. But as I, um, my kids were getting older, you know, I, I wanted to be able to give back to the people that I was interacting with in a way that was meaningful for them. And I'm used to making my own schedule and, um, I, I love, I love growing things. So having my own business and being an entrepreneur, just a, a natural progression. Hmm. Now and I, don't, I can't even tell you the last, the last job that I worked <laughs> like a nine to five job. It's been you know, <laughs> a couple decades. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's exciting. So what, what mm -hmm. if, if you, if you had to think back to that, period of time to when you're starting a business and, and people listening are in, are in different places. Some are trying right. to start a business. Some are in the business. Some are trapped by the business <laughs> because they are, <laughs> they're all out of balance. Um, if, if you could start your business all over again and, and change anything, is there anything that you would do differently? Oh, <laughs> there's probably an endless list of things that I would do differently. Um, I, I think the biggest thing for me was, is just starting, um, and just do it. Like, don't spend an enormous time worrying about getting everything perfect. Mm. Um, whether it's the business plan, you know, how you make sales or you do your sales, you know, the logo, the branding, the, you know, the website's got to look a certain way, just get out there and do it. And get it done and don't worry about everything else. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because I was at a women's entrepreneur with women entrepreneur day in Philly a couple of weeks ago. And this woman a couple of years ago opened a, um, a fitness center and she said we had no business plan. She's like, we do now, but <laughs> she's like the best thing I could have ever done was just jump in instead of trying to perfect the website before I opened my doors. You know, that's so I think important. That's definitely, I was def yeah, I think that definitely, I was in the, oh, it's all going to be perfect. You know, and, and I think that's a product of the internet marketing that you and I are bombarded with on a daily basis, that yeah. it, it's kind of conditioned us to think you can't possibly be successful unless you get this program or download this piece of software or read this special report. And if, if you do that, you're, and some of that information is really good, but the, I think the point is you don't have to have all of that to get started. Just learn by doing and, and learn as mm -hmm. you go, learn as you grow. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So, and that's, I, for me, at least that's the best way for me to do things is to learn as I grow. Hmm. Now, uh, and I have a, a process, I have a process that I take people through at the end of the year that allows them to reflect, but really plan for next year. Hmm. Yeah. We're, we're getting close to the end of the, of the year now. So how, how does that work? It, it's really a um, process of looking at not only your successes, uh, which I don't think we spend enough time uh, you know, really focusing on uh, and evaluating how you can make those even bigger, but also looking at the failures, which I like to rephrase as learning experiences and closing those gaps mm. and then and gaining clarity about what you want to experience and the feelings that you want to have um, around, you know, several different areas. Interesting, because I think so many people will approach their business from a completely uh, uh, logical or or mm -hmm. metric based data driven 
perspective and and they never really dig deep and try to get to the bottom of how do they want the business to make them feel. And from a marketing standpoint, I think that's important as well. It's not just about the the breakdown of your products and services and what you offer, but it is about how do you make people feel and you probably right. know that from from your experience in in the health business. It, it's it's more than just commoditizing your product and service. It's about personalizing your brand, engaging with people, and thinking about how you want to make people feel in your business. And I guess people don't do that because they have never really stopped to think about how do I want the business to make me feel as the owner. How do I want to feel when I right. get up in the morning? Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. And the reason why that's important for me is that when we only look at the business as far as, you know, numbers and linearly and, and from a logistical standpoint, you're missing your interaction and it, and the habits and the things that you bring to the table that are far more variable. And we all have, you know, great habits and bad habits that we bring Mm. and maybe it comes in a management style. Maybe it's, you know, loss of productivity, um, being inconsistent. When we start identifying the things that we, that make us feel good or we feel like we, we did a great job with and the things that we, you know, we don't feel good about like, like overwhelm or stress, then you can identify where in the business you actually need to change some of the actions and the structures. And it closes the the gap for that. Mm. Very cool. And and very needed. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you talk about is, is the myth of life balance. And so many people have have talked about balancing your life, work life balance. You're saying that's a myth and you're saying instead, what we need to do is learn to create life fluidity Tell us what that means and and why life fluidity is more important than life balance. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's really very simple. Um, you know, if if you have balance, things are divided up into equal portions or pieces, and our lives don't work that way. Hmm. You know, if you were to if you were to divide things up into however anybody wants to categorize it, but for our conversation, say it's, uh, you know, it's work, it's taking care of yourself, it's, um, you know, health, relationships with, you know, other people, um, I don't know, finances, and the time that it takes to do any of those or to participate in any of those, on any given day, you're not paying equal attention to all of them. Hmm. And you can't. Some of them are going to have, you know, far more important things than, than others. And I think that's what causes a lot of stress is that we're, you know, particularly with the work life balance, it, you know, well, I'll just divide everything into equal pieces and then I'm all good. And there's going to be days where you, know, you have a big project and you know, to move the business forward and you need to spend the time to do that. There's going to be other times when you need to, either work out or go to the doctor or, you know, there's a health issue or something with a family member that needs to be addressed and you have to take that time. Um, I've been a single mom for just over 10 years right now. And um, it, one of the things I've learned is that, you know, as I'm trying to balance growing a business and, you know, be there for my kids, um, their dad, he lives several hours away, so he's not in their lives on a regular basis, and he, and he can't be, is that, you know, you've got to shift things, and that's where that fluidity came in for me. So it's it's allowing the day to be well-planned, but, you know, there's days where I need to show up for my kid's football game, and I'm not going to be in the office, you know, in the middle of the afternoon when it's football season. But there's other days where, you know, I'm going to work a longer day because that's what needs to get done. I like that. And when you allow that, yeah, and when you allow that, the stress goes away because it's not about the hours or the, you know, the amount of time. It's about the quality and getting the thing that needs to be done done on that day. Hmm. 
Yeah, I, I could see where that would be a, a really useful skill to, to be to have fluidity as opposed to balance. And it, you're always right. trying to be it, you're always trying to balance on that tightrope. And for a lot of people, you just fall off and it only takes something going not the way you expected. We were talking off air about how last week my Internet and telephone went out. And, you know, mm -hmm. from a productivity standpoint, I could freak out or I could say, well, there's plenty of offline things that I need to attend to. And so just go do them. And eventually the the telephone and Internet comes back and you, you slip back into what you have to do that you weren't able to do. But that's what it's all about, being fluid, being flexible and eventually I think in the long run, you end up being happier and more productive as opposed to trying to, to balance everything on a daily basis. I, I totally agree. And it really takes the fluidity piece takes out the part of getting it all right again. Hmm. If you're, you're doing exactly you know, what you did with you just shifted gears. Mm -hmm. So maybe it wasn't your most productive day, but given you know that you had no internet and phone <laughs> you got you got stuff done that you could and you moved on yeah 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 well that and you and so you've got to be flexible and so i i guess the bottom line for our listeners is try to try to relax and be more intuitive and for me it helps to to, to look at things and plan for things in the context of a week I have a, a certain idea of what needs to be done on a day by day basis, but I found for me that a day is too small and a month is too big. But a week is kind of a good a good framework to build upon, um, and so that yeah. way I'm not in bondage to every day or this day it has to be. No, it's this week, and I think that helps you to be more fluid too. If you're into planning and scheduling every single minute of the day, something's going to go wrong, <laughs> and, and yeah. then, then you're going to break. So uh, you're all about the being fluid as opposed to, to trying to be balanced, so to speak. Absolutely, and from a plan from a planning standpoint, I totally agree with you. A day is too short and a month is way too long. Having that week by week of of what do I want to get done is so, so helpful. And I actually include um, two half hour blocks in my day that are just, they're booked off, but they're empty. So that for things that, you know, have taken too long or that come up or that I need to adjust and shift to so that, um, you know, I don't have that feeling of, oh no, you know, <laughs> such and such just happened. And, and it allows me to do the, sh you know, the shifting uh, in a way that, again, just is like, all right, I can just handle that at this time, or I'll move this to over here. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's really useful, and I think that's going to help listeners to try to try to relax and and not over plan and overthink, but be more flexible and be more fluid in their activities. Right. Awesome. Now, and, you, and again, it's, mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. I was say, and again. With the fluidity piece, you want to think about what do you want to experience and how do you feel? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, who goes into that process saying, you know, I, I want to be stressed out and I want to be mm -hmm. running around uh, behind schedule all day long. You don't want to feel that way, but the way maybe we are planning is putting is setting us up to feel that way without us really yeah. realizing it. Exactly. So that's that's where those two blocks come in for me is I don't want to feel the overwhelm and the stress. Mm -hmm. I want to have, I want to feel fun and productivity and movement towards making a difference. Well, that leads me to the next uh, thing that I wanted to, to really talk with you about. And that is you yeah. are, you are the creator of the empire builder assessment and you, you created mm -hmm. this and this is really what my mission is, is, is to help, people build the business they need for the life they want. And here you are, you've, right. you've created a system for delivering that, that is uh, custom designed to get your clients that result. Tell Walk us through that process and tell us a little bit about how uh, that works and what are some of the key distinctions that, that you help your clients to achieve there? 
Sure. So just to clarify, too, because um, I know some people think, you know, Empire is either Star Wars or, <laughs> you know, their business being, you know, an, an empire, which for me it, it is. It's one piece of the empire. The other empire it, pieces of the empire are your relationship with self, your relationship with your immediate family, and how you're touching your community. Hmm. Um, so it's more than just the business. Um, and the process I take my clients through has been so much fun because we're not thinking about a lot of those things that I mentioned, like our wellness, other than the list of shoulds that we do mm-hmm. or we have. Um, you know, but it really takes them through the process of figuring out what it is that they want, not only in their business, not only like how they want to increase their revenue or their sales or the clients they want to have or, you know, what they want to make for a product or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But also, what is it that they want to be experiencing? And then we build a plan for how to get there. Hmm. Um, you know, so on both business and life. So I have them, you know, vision out things like what the, what's on their bucket list, um, you know, what their, their goals are over the next three, six, nine months. Um, and then different pieces and aspects of the business and, um, and their life. So, you know, we get into spirituality, we get into wellness, um, we get into finances, we get into, uh, you know, relationship to self. Where are the roadblocks and the, the places that they're holding themselves up? Because we all have beliefs that stop us from achieving that success that we are, you know, are all dreaming of, regardless of where you are in your business. You could be in business for six months or 10 years and there's still, um, you know, something that we want more of that we haven't attained yet. Hmm. And the results have been really cool because it's, it allows, um, a lot of clarity around what are the top three things that I want to accomplish in the next six months. It gives them a plan of action. It allows them to be more productive, it allows them to move forward and let go of a lot of shoulda, coulda, wouldas that we all experience on a regular basis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, yeah. with, with the people that you work with and, and and at all different stages of their business, but there's bound to be some, some challenges that keep coming up. What do you think is the biggest thing that people you work with struggle with? Um, two things and totally different. Um, are there limiting beliefs? Um, and then their sales. Mm. And where is the next sale? Sell, or sell? Can't talk. Where is the next sale coming from? Um, you know, a lot of times I spend time working on, you know, building the sales funnel with them, but also helping them, um, you know, shift their mindset around selling so that it's more of this is how I'm serving other people as opposed to I have a product that, you know, I now need to cram down somebody's throat. <laughs> <laughs> or service for that matter it doesn't matter yeah yeah, yeah. Um, because you, regardless of whether it's a service or a product if you're creating something that is of value there are people out there who need and want that and if you're not showing up and you're not connecting with them you're not helping them hmm. yeah and, and if it doesn't create value why are you doing it anyway in the first place right exactly <laughs> Exactly. I, I like that approach. So if it's creating value, somebody out there values it. And mm-hmm. so it, mm-hmm. you, you serve them with it. If it doesn't create value, uh, you're in the wrong business or you're, you're going about it the wrong way. Find out what the value is and deliver it. And it, I, I think we right. overcomplicate things. So it, it's, it's everything. Yeah, we complicate everything. So it's really helpful to have yeah. uh, someone like you to, to help break this down and look at it. And uh, to, to be able to get some momentum going in your business that that sometimes you can't get just by looking at it uh, day after day and, and you really don't know which direction to, to go to. So you help them create a step by step action plan to get the mm-hmm. results they want in their life and in their business. Yes. Yes. So a great example would be I worked with somebody recently and she's a photographer and when I first started working with her, she's like, I can't tell. My prices are too high. I've been told they're too high. 
Um, I can't fill my book. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I have all these different things I'm offering. None of them are working. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, the you know, conversation went on. Within a couple of months, we had created, we, you know, narrowed down what she was offering, created a way for people to get into her funnel, her sales funnel from that. Um, and with the mindset work, she, um, she actually filled her book from like July to December in two weeks. Mm. And that, because she did that and then she increased her income that she could then go back and, you know, pay for some of the things that she wanted to do that gave her peace of mind, that gave her the support that allowed her to spend time with her kids more. Wow. Because we had identified those in the, the uh, blueprint process as well. Very cool. And and that's, yeah. I, I think people who are entrepreneurial and very creative, and this is the thing I run into all the time with my clients. Mm -hmm. They they have so many ideas for so many different things, new products, yeah. new programs, new services, but they need, they need to see one thing through to completion and make it profitable before moving on to the next. And some, they yeah. love to create so much. They just want to create the next thing and they don't even care about selling the thing that they just created before. So that that's not a recipe for business success. Um, yeah. It, it, so it, it, I have not, <laughs> I, say, I have not seen any entrepreneur that I've either known or followed create um, multiple products at the same time and have them all be successful. <laughs> Yep. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Well, th this yeah. is, this has been really, uh, really good to, to think about, especially as we get here to the, to the end of the year and thinking about the first part of the year. Um, what shifts do we need to make in our thinking? How do we need to approach our business and our life differently? And, um, so th this has been very, very uh, helpful. And and very interesting to to get your distinctions. How can our listeners get in touch with you to find out more about your your coaching, your speaking, um, and mm -hmm. your 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 books and other things that you offer? Oh, absolutely. So I'm on social media, so Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, wherever else is out there. I think I'm on it all. <laughs> uh, but my the best way is my. Website is emmykirshner.com and I'll spell it. Uh, it's E M I K I R S C H N E R.com. Wonderful. That's Emmy Kushner, Kirshner.com. Kirshner. Yep. And yep. Um, we'll have that on the website as well. Perfect. Um, it, it's okay. really been a pleasure speaking with you. And I'm curious if you have any, um, any final words or, or advice that you want to give someone to either help them start a new business or to take their current business to the next level of success? Sure. So um, actually two pieces. One back to the, like, just do it. If you're particularly, if you're starting or if you're thinking of up leveling, just, just do it. You know, people are waiting for whatever it is that you have to offer. Uh, and the other the other thing is I'd love to share my favorite quote by the Dalai Lama, and that is that the point of life is happiness. Mm. We were we were not put on, on earth here to be stressed out and overwhelmed all the time. Perfect. So, the, yeah. point, the point of life is happiness. Happiness, yeah. So as you're calendaring and planning and thinking about like everything that you want to do in December and beyond, think about where you can take the stress and the chaos out. Hmm. Excellent. Well, it, it's been yeah. really, it's been a real pleasure. Emmy Kirshner, she is a coach, speaker, and author. You can get in touch with her and find out more on, on social media, as well as her website, emmykirshner.com. Thank you so much for being on the program today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been a great time. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at ralphbrogdon.com.